All right, let's talk about symbols, my favorite subject. And um, I almost mean that. <laughs> um, it, th this is a great feature of Vectorworks because what it allows you to do is, is it allows you to draw anything. You could draw a line, you could draw a circle, you could put text. Anything that you draw, you can turn into a symbol. So let me um, extend this out to the extreme case where you're creating a symbol that's very complex. Maybe it's a window that you're drawing. And there are going to be 20 of these windows in your, in your drawing placed on your, your floor plan. And it's a 3D. It's using tons of memory. Um, which, by the way, for us at this point is not a big deal with these 2D drawings that we're doing. We're not using very much memory. But when you get into complex 3D drawings with lots of rendering, boy, memory becomes a big issue. Um, so that's, that's why I'm, I'm emphasizing that. And that's one of the advantages of a symbol is that going back, if, if I were to just simply draw the, this very complex window and then duplicate it, and duplicate it again, duplicate it again, and you know, I've got 20 of these things I've got to put in the drawing. And let's say that that window used, um, uh, let's say it used 100 megabytes. Well, each one of those duplicates would also use 100 megabytes of memory. And so now all of a sudden you're, you're way up there in your memory. What a symbol does is it allows you to draw this object just the way you normally would draw it. And when you get comp you know, all done with it, you're going to save it as a symbol. Now you can bring instances of the symbol into your drawing from the resource palette. And you can just keep bringing them in and bringing them in and bringing them in. But guess what? It only uses the memory of one of them. And so that's very powerful. Now the other thing that is powerful about it is if you got all 20 of those windows in your drawing and you realize that you know you had done something wrong, there was some, something that wasn't right in the drawing, well you could double click on one of the one of the symbols, go into the edit symbol mode, fix it, exit symbol, and it would fix all 20 windows. Or if you'd drawn a thousand of them, it would fix all of them. So that's very, very powerful stuff. So it's really something worth uh, uh, learning about. And uh, so let's let's go down that road. All right, let's do this. Open your um, vacation home project, and if you will, get on the uh, title block um, layer and the class of none. Okay, so up here you're going to be title block and a class of none. The class at this point really doesn't matter. It's probably going to be something that you're going to change depending on where this marker that we're going to draw, for example, where it ends up on which sheet. It might become part of sheet 3 info. It might be sheet 4 info. You don't know at this point because you haven't drawn anything yet. Okay. So let's draw an elevation marker. So you're on the layer is title block, the class is none. We're going to uh, double click on the circle tool. I want you to type in a diameter of one half inch. I'll do it again, half inch, and create it next mouse, mouse click and click. Okay, I'm going to zoom in as you should as well. And I'm going to get the polygon tool now, and I'm going to draw a triangle, a right triangle. I'm going to come up. This is just, uh, I'm just eyeballing this. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to come over here like this. All right, great. Now I'm going to duplicate it. Mirror duplicate it. Mirror and duplicate it. I'm going to select both triangles, go to Modify, and Add Surface. This is going to turn both of those triangles into one. Boom. 
there it is. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, while I have the triangle selected, I'm going to turn it to black, a black fill. And I'm going to Command B, send it to the back, or Control B. All right, so there we go. There it is. Only other thing I need to do now is draw a line right here so that I can put, um, you know, this is elevation A up here, and so on found on page 2. Put a 2 down here. I'm going to select all of this and change the line weight because I'm on a, I'm just on my template. I just opened the template up blank um, rather than opening up the vacation home like you guys. Okay, so now I've got my line weight correctly um, uh, put in there, and there's my little marker. All right, now I'm going to um, highlight it, make sure that it's all um, uh, selected. Now you could group it, but here's the, here's the thing you want to remember about grouping. If you group this thing now, and you then turn it into a symbol, and you go back later on and say, ooh, I, I don't like that triangle, I want it to be a little bigger or smaller. When you edit it, you're going to have to remember that it's grouped and ungroup it. It's just a, you know, once it's a, once it's a uh, symbol, believe me, it's grouped. You can't do anything to it unless you go into the edit window, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, so here's our symbol. We're going to go to... Um, let's see, we're going to go to Modify, Create Symbol, and let's call this Elevation Marker. I'm going to call mine 2. You just call yours Elevation Marker. Um, I already have one drawn that's going to it'll ask me to override it. I guess I could just do that. In fact, I think I will do that. Okay, Elevation Marker. All right, now I want the next mouse click. Once I go OK, then what it's saying is the next mouse click it is going to determine where my insertion point is. Okay, and I'll explain that in just a second. Now, over here, units, this is important. Do we want page based or do we want world based? Well, if we go world based, that means that the uh, symbol is going to change. If we go off of title block and we draw on the three quarter inch scale layer, it would scale it down to a half an inch and quarter in three quarter inch scale. You wouldn't even be able to see it. So we want this marker, no matter where we are, what you know, what layer we're on, we want it to show up the same size on every sheet. So we're going to select page based. Okay, and then insert in walls. We're not doing any of that. Um, leave instance in place. That means the one we just drew, it's going to leave it there. And change 2D objects from layer plane to screen plane. Uh, let's leave that there. We'll talk about this later on. Um, convert to group. No, we don't need to do that. And active class. Okay, so that's good. Active class is none. Let's click OK. Now we get our special cursor. I'm going to go right to the center of this guy and make that the insertion point. Now it's saying, uh, where do you want to put it? Where do you want to put this symbol? Well, right now, I'm just going to leave, leave it in the file in which I'm drawing it. Okay, and in your case, up, up here, instead of saying Untitled 2, yours is, should say, um, vacation project or whatever you name the vacation project vacation home project alright you could create a new folder if you wanted to but we're just going to go OK and there it is now it's a symbol and when I come over here in the resource browser notice that I'm in the file of Untitled 2, right there, there's Untitled 2, that's the one I'm in. I have all of these 
uh, markers that I've drawn. Here's the new one because I think I did it in lowercase. This was the one I originally had. I'm actually going to, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one. I like the other one better anyway. It looks better. It's more, it's better proportion. Okay, so there it is. And I could, you know, come in here and double click on this guy and bring it in, click. Now, I'm not done because this clicking once now says, now Vectorworks is saying, well, which way do you want it to point? And so you can rotate this thing around and point it however you want. Let's say we wanted one like that. And let's say we wanted one like that. And one like, oops, like that. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Let's get rid of that one. Load another one. So it just keeps loading them on if you notice. Um, when you're done, hit the X key and that'll take you out. And there we have four uh, elevation markers. Now, if we decided that we didn't like the triangle or we thought the circle was too small or too big or you forgot to draw the line or you needed to edit it, you needed to do something. What you can do, and let's do this. I'll do this. You don't do this. Or if you can, if you want to. But I'm going to double click on one of these guys. And I'm going to say, yes, this is a 2D component. I'm going to edit that. And this screen opens up. Now, what this cross, this red um, X axis, and here's the green is the is basically the y-axis. It's showing me that where those two intersect, that is the insertion point. Now, so if I wanted to change that, what I could do is I could select this guy and I could maybe move it out. And let's say I wanted to make that the insertion point. Cool. Do that. And let's say I didn't want the line. I could get rid of the oops. To see, I could get rid of. Okay, let's go again here. I could get rid of the. I could get rid of the line. Click off. Delete the line. There we go. Now, watch what happens when I exit symbol. You're going to come over here to the right side, and you're going to find this little box. Exit symbol. Now, the line's gone on all of them, and if I bring a new one in, notice it's going to insert it at the bottom rather than in the center. So that's how you create a symbol. That's how you edit a symbol. And um, again, editing is just as simple as double-clicking and saying, yeah, I want to edit it. And come in. And now I'm going to bring it back to where I had it. Oops. Select both objects. Bring it back to the center. And what else? Oh, and draw. And I need to draw the line. So get the line tool here. Draw the line and make sure that it's point 0.15 and exit symbol. Okay, so that's how you um, that's how you do that.